from the News Channel 5 Network. This is Morning Line with Nick Barris. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining us on Morning Line. Nick Barris here with you on a Tuesday. Hope you're having a good morning. And uh, listen, always uh, I'm going to put this out there. You're invited to join in the conversation. Uh, you may have a comment or two. Um, I'd be curious to hear this morning uh, whether you have a thought on what we're discussing or if you know of someone or yourself have ever sought out one of these loans. And what we're going to talk about today are payday loans, if you will, flexible credit. You see the advertisements on TV. They advertise in all forms of media, including here on News Channel 5. You know, I, I got my title back from Title Max, and there's some other ones where they're, you know, getting money when they need it in the short term, and then, you know, they can use it to spend on what they need and how this plays out. Of course, the advertisements are one thing. How these things really work is what we want to kind of get into this morning and what the issues are, and keeping in mind that uh, some of these high interest rates and the money being made through all this is all legal under state law but I think uh, it, it's something that anyone who wants to consider these types of loans has to have an understanding of how they work or you might find yourself in debt up to your neck um, the number 737-7587 with us this morning is Marla Williams from Legal Aid it's good to have you on Marla thank you I mean, can you under in your mind um, if you had a friend who uh, was facing some financial hardship in the short term. Can you un can you foresee any scenario in your mind with a friend that you would recommend they go to one of these loan lenders? No, sir. Under any circumstance? No. None? Not if it was my friend, no. And why is that? Well, because they would typically pay back a whole lot more than they borrow. Mm -hmm. Um, I just think generally it's not a good idea. Okay. Um, there should um, be other alternatives. For, certainly if it's my friend, I would help them out. But, well, of um, course, of course. But alternatives, they need to find an alternatives to um, seeking money from payday lenders. The fact is, though, thousands and thousands and thousands of people do seek money here in the state of Tennessee, and these are all around the country, of course, these payday lenders on a daily basis seeking this money out. Um, folks who need it short term. Let's lay this out then. Um, what is the definition of a payday lender? I guess that kind of says as much right there. I'm assuming you're taking a loan based on your pay that's going to come down the road and you'll pay it back. But how do these work? Well, how they work um, is that you borrow money and you pay back over time or um, for instance, there's first the um, the title loans. Okay. Um, that's that's not really a payday loan, but I want to talk okay. a little bit about that. That is a loan where you you get money as the borrower or the, the customer uh, in exchange for giving the title or leaving the title to your vehicle mm -hmm. uh, with the lender. That's your collateral. Yes. Okay. And by the way, let's make this clear that. Folks who usually tend to go to these businesses to take money are folks that cannot get loans from banks. That is Meaning true. that these are folks who probably have bad credit and have no place else to perhaps turn and desperately need some money. That's, that's correct. Um, typically, I will ask my clients, why, you, why did you resort to mm -hmm. this type of loan? And it's, the response is... I filed bankruptcy, so I, you know, can't get a loan from a bank or can't get a credit card. Um, so yes, these are people who are desperate for money who can't get that at a, you know, a, at a reasonable interest rate. But they aren't destitute in the sense that they must have some assets because, you know, these payday loan companies or the title companies, title there, meaning if you have a car that is paid for, you put up your title. They give you the money. You are supposed to pay back that money, I assume, with interest. If you don't or can't, they have your title and they'll come take your car. That's right. That's how it is. And, mm -hmm. okay, again, this is all legal. It's legit. Some people say it sounds like loan sharking, but it's not. I mean, it's, it's all written. It's legal under the law. And, and now, if these folks put up their title, I'll let you finish explaining on the title loans, they take the loan out. They typically have a window to pay back the amount plus what? How much interest do they typically pay? you know, and then they can get their title back. I'm not quite sure on the title loan how much the interest and fees are. Um, 
but that is, you know, they, they're given a certain amount of money uh, in exchange for the title, as I said before. Um, and as you alluded to, if they're not able to pay back, they are at risk of having their vehicle um, mm -hmm. repossessed. Um, and let me just say that sometimes these lenders allow folks to roll over. Say, for instance, you gave your title, you have a month to pay, your, pay back the loan in full. You don't pay it back within that time, so you, you may roll over and ex you know, do another extension of credit. Uh, they keep the title as collateral, but then you pay additional fees. So it just keeps growing it keeps as growing. you put it off. Right. You're still driving your car, but you don't have the title, they've got it. Right. And it rolls in, and I, like oftentimes you hear this with folks with credit cards, uh, you know, eventually if you're not careful, you get buried and just, you can barely afford the minimum payment on that debt. You never get out from under, is that what happens with some of these folks? They stop paying, they take you to court? Right, right. Like with the title loan situation, uh, if they repossess your co vehicle as collateral, uh, often they do not get enough at the sale of your vehicle to pay off the loan so you still owe more the money mm -hmm. um, so they can sue you for that amount so a lot of these folks maybe are the working poor they have jobs so they can go and garnish your wages right right yeah. garnish your wages Do you get the sense with some of the clients that you've talked to with legal aid they went into this as you said I had no place else to turn I went how quickly do they realize what they've done is burying them further? Did they, did they acknowledge that was a possibility? Or did they honestly go in thinking, I'll get this money and I'll pay it back and I'll be free and clear? How quickly do they realize that, you know, what I've done here is not really helping me, maybe briefly in the short term, but it's buried me long term? It depends on the person. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes we have, we see clients who, um, realize it real early on, uh, uh, but sometimes we have clients who have been involved in these types of loans for years wow. um, and have just tried to pay and never are able to pay it in full. Let's talk then too as we lay out kind of what's available out there. Payday loans, how's that different from a title loan? Payday loans are different in that, um, well, first of all, you do not have to give collateral. You don't give a vehicle or anything, but you, um, you get a short-term cash advance, uh, and that's based on, um, you know, you bring in proof of when you get paid uh, mm -hmm. so that they will have the loan um, becoming due on the date that you are paid. And, and what happens is often you leave a check, like you leave a post-dated check. Blank. Blank, well. Would it be blank filled, or would you? Filled out to the lender. Oh, okay, filled it, but is that total amount that they owe written? Yes, now? Okay, it's so the total it's all amount set. that they okay. owe. And I mean, of course, the amount they owe is more, not, than, what they, more than what they got. Well, they, yeah. now, in fairness, I mean, to the lender or whatever, I mean, if you're borrowing from anyone, regular banks or this, you're going to have to pay them something. That's how they make money. But right. what kind of interest is it typically? Like, if I'm borrowing $1,000 from one of these payday loan places, I've got a month to pay it back. What do I have to pay back? Uh, 1000 and... Probably in the neighborhood of 20, 30 percent. 20 or 30 percent. Mm -hmm. 24, 30 percent. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then if you miss that month when you're supposed to pay that back, then it really starts compounding. It does. Are and there fees as opposed to the interest? Well, in this situation, there, there's interest, but what happens with the payday loans is, you know, as I said, you've got a, you've got a, the lender has a check. And um, so not only do you have the fees and the interest that you have to pay the lender, but what they do is they take the checks to the bank um, on the date that they are to be, you know, mm -hmm. drawn or the, the, on the date they're post dated. And um, if those, that money's not in the bank, you have the additional problem of you know, overdraft, overdraft charges. charges. Mm -hmm. And let me also say this, is I had a client once who um, was a, he received Social Security and um, on the date, the morning 
that his Social Security was deposited into his account. He got there 8.30. His money had already been taken because, um, according to the banks, these payday lenders line up at the window before mm -hmm. the bank opens. And they, you know, they make sure that they, you know, send Dip the checks money. through. Yep. Yep. And so my client came in, you know, shortly before nine and said, I went to the bank and my money, I don't have any money, but he owed the payday lenders. Yeah. And wow. And again, it's, it's all legal. Um, I noticed that there was a mushrooming of these businesses after 2015. And we're going to talk more about where you predominantly see these businesses. Um, in other words, you're not going to see many of them in Bell Mead, if you know what I mean. But um, what happened in 2015? In 2015, uh, the Flexible Credit Act was passed. Mm -hmm. uh, and that has to do with flex loans, as we call them um, for short. And you know, that's, that's what they're called, is flex loans. But uh, it made it, uh, the Flexible Credit Act made it legal uh, to charge uh, interest, which is different. Interest is, uh, under the Flexible Credit Act, is uh, for a flex loan is 24%. Um, the problem with under, for a flex loan is that the law allows for what they call customary fees at 0.7%. On top of it. Oh, yes. Yes. Yeah, so well, you know, for the, yeah. the APR, mm -hmm. uh, with the 0.7% is 279.5%. So um, that's the situation, um, like, as you said, it's, it's legal, mm -hmm. um, but the Flexible Credit Act allowed, made, made that legal okay, in, in and, 2015. And that was passed by state lawmakers. If you wonder about the proliferation of these um, as we go to the break, be clear on this. It is a very, very lucrative business for those who run this. And I would imagine they have a powerful lobby. I would say so. We'll take a break. We're going to get more into this. We'll take some phone calls. Have you ever taken a loan, a payday loan, a flex loan, a title loan? Be curious to hear how that worked out for you. Again, it's all legal. Uh, it's the American way you go about this. People make these choices. But we're going to look into, you know, who it is that uh, maybe benefits from this and who doesn't. Take some of your calls and get more into the details with our guest with us this morning from Legal Aid, Marla Williams. Stay with us. Back with more.